Welcome to Scav Talk, everyone. Uh, today is going to be a little bit of a different episode, as you can see for the video watchers, that I am running solo today. <laughs> and we got Tarkov on the second monitor. Poggers, no, we're not playing Tarkov. <laughs> but um, I got some cool stuff planned. So Giga Beef is not feeling well. Um, I spoke to him throughout the week, and he is, him and his family uh, caught something that's not COVID, thankfully. Um, but he's doing fine. And however, he, um, his voice is just not up the snuff, he said. So, um, wish him speed recovery. Hope everything gets well and everything turns out okay. But with that, I want to talk to you guys about the news, the Tarkov news. So kind of just catching everyone up on some things. Um, it's been a slow news week this week. Presumably BSG is just hard at work on crunching, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But we did get a AK um, space trooper. Like the, what is it? Is it the QRS handguard? Um, I'm going to pull it up on screen here. Seamless transition. <laughs> so as you can see, it's the, what is it? CQR? It's like the combo. It's like a stock and a handguard. And I guess, I don't know. I don't know if it's how it functions, like technical stuff. Like I don't know if there's going to be like an adapter here. I don't know what kind of AK this is. I think it's a 7.62 AK, but I'm not positive because the banana mag is throwing me off a little bit here. Um, but nonetheless, I suspect it goes on the fixed stock AKs with the tube adapter. Um, at any rate, though, there's been some other leaks previously. Uh, I think there was like a scope. It was, oh man, I looked it up. Um, I think it was another four times scope, one by four times scope. Um, but other than that, it's been fairly slow. Um, there was, I think it was last week, we talked about um, this event that BSG was teasing. Uh, the following Saturday, because we record on Friday. And it turns out the epic event that we were so stoked for was the Sherpa the Year anniversary. Presumably that was it. And um, which is cool, you know, the, celebrating the Sherpas and all the hard work that they do, because they do work their butts off and help in the community. Um, but a little bit of a letdown for us anticipating some type of in game event, nonetheless. So uh, I want to talk about 12.12 .12 and sort of recapping everything that we know so far. So the big question, when's wipe, right? The <laughs> uh, truth of the matter is no one really knows when's wipe. Everyone's sort of speculating that it's going to be Christmas like last time. Who knows? OK, it, it could be tomorrow. It could be um, January. It could be summer. OK, probably not summer of 2022, but, you know. We really don't know, but it seems to be soft confirmed that patch 12.12 .12 comes with a wipe. That seems to be the case. Based off uh, the podcast with Nikita, Nice Guy, Axel, and um, Pestilli, some of the verbiage and words that Nikita used. Um, that sort of plays into that BSG were talking within that podcast about crunch and how they want to crunch down for these coming months because I think they take their winter break in January, I want to say. I might be wrong about that. Um, nonetheless, it, they are crunching to get the product 12.12, uh, .12, that is, finalized and ready to go. And with that, we got some information from Nikita himself about what's confirmed. So Lighthouse is coming. It's the first iteration. There won't be a trader. Um, like an in raid trader, there won't be a scav boss either. These things that were teased about the map, um, but it's just going to be the map, essentially, right? Those things will come later with um, expansions and further patches and iterations. Uh, we also have inertia is coming. Um, we also got VoIP, which we talked about in our last episode, I believe. Um, check that out if you haven't seen it. That was a fun talk. Um, on that note of VoIP. Scav Karma will be very interesting to test with VoIP and how that works. I'm I'm hopeful that Scav Karma gets a bit of a rework. I don't 
really know how BSG sees the current system functioning, like if it's functioning the way that they intended, so to speak. Um, because it is sort of like, it's very incentivized. It incentivizes a very particular behavior, which if that's the goal, then that's fine. Um, but it'll be interesting. I mean, one of the things that they've done since Scav Karma has been out is now when you have higher rep, you lose more rep for committing bad actions. Um, I saw a tweet by Nixia um, who basically said that they lost, they, they got into some sort of like conflict and they couldn't determine who was the aggressor and they end up guessing wrong and they lost, they went from seven points to 5.9 points, which is a huge, huge loss. And you kind of see some of the, the faults in the system, but there's a bit of an interesting discussion from Tarkov reporter. Uh, shout out to Tarkov Reporter, does some really great news coverage and also some pretty cool evasion related uh, recaps and stuff. Check them out. Holding, hoping Scav Karma gets a complete rework for patch 12.12. The first generation of it has made me less interested in using my Scav, which I feel very similarly in that now that the dust has sort of settled for Scav Karma and sort of the meta, if you will, has been figured out and the most mid-max thing to do to get the most rubles or whatever. Um, it has made the, the scav mode less interesting, you know? And there was sort of a debate in the threads. Um, I won't go over everything, but it's, it, that's sort of my question to BSG is like, how, how, does, how do they see the system? Is it working as intended? Um, because if the intention is to have everyone working together, then I think mission accomplished, you know, for the most part, everyone works together. So I don't know. It's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting topic for sure. We'll have to see how VoIP plays into it. I think VoIP kind of opens up the door for more cooperation, more communication, a lot more interaction, potentially more conflict. Like there's a lot of things that that involves and depending on how they adjust the scav karma rule sets, it could definitely spice it up because I kind of miss the days of going in as a scav and feeling that scavenger, you know, role play aesthetic, if you will. Like, you, you know, it was like, dang, there's a there's a juicer over there. You know, I got to dodge him. It's like, dang, there's a group of PMCs or sorry, a group of scavs over there. I got to dodge that pack of scavs. I kind of miss some of that. Um, now it just feels like looting simulator. But nonetheless. Um, that's going to be interesting. The other thing that's coming is DLSS. And if, for those of you who don't know, this is essentially NVIDIA's um, AI technology that upscales and I believe also downscales, but I'm not positive, um, dynamically your resolution um, with the 20 series and up graphics cards, those tensor cores. And it could be pretty big for Tarkov. Um, the Cycle Frontier had DLSS, and I used it for the first time. I don't think I've ever used DLSS before that. And I tried it on and off, and I got better, stable, more consistent frames and performance using it. Even though there was some trade-offs. Like, for example, one of the things I noticed is my crosshair, or my iron sight, I should say, reticle, whatever it was sort of like ghosting when I was swiping left and right, um, which was, a, you know, visually I didn't like it, but I eventually got used to it. Um, so I'm curious to see how that works. I think that's just the nature of the, the technology um, and the AI. But getting more frames in Tarkov, I'll, I'll take it any day. <laughs> any day, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get more than 90 or 60 on reserve. Um, the other thing that's coming is new weapon jams. Um, they talked about this. They showed off a few animations a while back, a couple months ago, with like the NDR. And I think even the most recent podcast, there were some talks of it. Things like overheating will be a malfunction. I think there's a couple different other ones coming. But the other thing they mentioned was that they're going to change the current system the current ammo malfunction to have a threshold between 
199 or sorry 90 percent that you will it's impossible to get an ammo malfunction um so we're gonna have some more more malfunctions and changes to the current system so that will be interesting to see how that plays out and as far as weapons goes the only thing that's confirmed and uh, we'll say a soft confirm because things happen things change is the scar um there was a bunch, I mean, there's been a bunch of like screenshots, leaks from them, um, new mods I'm sure will be coming. I want to say some revolver shotguns possibly, um, but all of that could change. There was even talks of work in progress as like the AUG, the G36 series. Um, yeah, so we'll have to see the ump suppressor. Hopefully that, that will come because that would be really cool to have a suppressor for the worst gun in the game just kidding it's not the worst it's only the second worst anyways uh and then to touch on the subject that nikita spoke about was the ets and what sort of been happening behind the scenes so based off what nikita said um this was about two weeks ago of today's date when the pastelli pack podcast was going on with nice guy axel and, and nikita um he was Basically saying that they were testing, they tested Inertia, they tested Unity, and then they were working on prepping to test VoIP. Um, in which we know, we now are on Unity, so clearly we've advanced the timeline since then. So we could maybe assume that VoIP has already been tested, or is still being tested. But it seems like things are slowly, the dominoes are falling into place, you know? We're, we're getting closer and closer. Um, I'm trying to remember if there was any other things he mentioned that they wanted to test on ETS, and it's not coming to my mind. So, yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the news as far as that goes. Um, with that, how long about? Okay. So. Um, some other cool stuff I wanted to discuss with you guys. So I've been experimenting with a bunch of like budget kits, you could say. And they're they're sort of budget kits. <laughs> they're more like min maxer kits, right? Because it's it's kind of hard to to come up with budget kits because budget is like relative to where you are in your Tarkov progression, right? If you're a, a level 10 dude. With no flea market access, you know, budget's like an SKS with iron sights, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if you're a level 30 guy, maybe budget's like a couple mods from some traders and, you know, an AK that's got a little bit of juice on it. You know, it just, it just kind of varies. But me being where I'm at, um, level, you know, max traders, I've been playing around with some different kits and it's been, it's been pretty interesting because I like that feeling of coming up big, you know? Killing the juicer, you know, getting the fat loots, you know. Um, so let me show you and tell you about what armor, what I've been running. So the first one, the first item that I've been using is the, do I have any bleaches? I do not. And you may already know where I'm going with this, but there is a barter on Ragman level one, I believe. Yes. For... Two bleaches, you can get a 6B47 helmet. Now, it used to be back in the day, back in my day, the penis helmet, aka the SSH-68 steel helmet, was like the go-to budget helmet. But when you look at the Ratnik helmet, or the 6B47, I mean, stat-wise, it has like, it's a little bit better, right? It's got... Minus 1% movement versus the penis helmets, minus 2%. Uh, change in turret speed, minus 5% versus minus 8. Ergonomics, minus 2 versus minus 13%, which I'm still not confident that the ergonomics feature uh, works. <laughs> I don't know. I would, I'd love to test it, but it's just not at the top of my priority. Um... The material is aluminum, which compared to armored steel, I'm not too sure how that stacks up. But regardless, they're the same class, right? They have the same ricochet chance. Yes, this one has a little bit less armor points, but really, the way I see it is, 
penis, penis helmets cost 22k. Uh, a bleach you can easily get for 10k, 11k, 12k. Right now it's a little bit high. Um, but I do this barter because the helmet's just, in my mind, it's slightly better. Uh, and you can put night vision on it if you find it in raid, like that's an extra slot to throw it on your head. It's just something that I like doing. Um, so that's what I've been running. Um, and then I've just been buying my M32 ears. That's kind of my go-to. I used to be a big sword and sky. Uh, but then after checking out Veritas's updated Comtax guide, I um, made the jump to M32s and I haven't looked back. But as far as rigs go, so for a while I was using the classic uh, rat rig, a.k.a. also known as, what is it called? The 6B3TM-01M. Okay, it's the rat rig. We all know what it's called. Now, it's 50k from the vendor, level 2, mind you, level 2 Ragman. And it's, you know, it, it's class 4. That's, that's kind of like what, that's like the bare minimum, right? You know, that's like the most ideal place you want to be sitting at for your, your low, your low tier armor. Now, this barter, though, and I want to say it's level 3 Ragman. Yes, so level 3 Ragman which I think it's like in the level, and I think you got to be PMC level 30, I want to say, like in that range. But this barter has like always been popular, always been good. And they recently changed it to a Kavas. Like you got to have four Aquamaris and one Kavas. Now the Aquamari, you can craft in your hideout, right? Yeah, I think it's like one super water, one silicon hose, and you get eight of those. And, you know, it's... The price fluctuates, but it, in my mind, it averages to be a little bit more than the rat rig. Um, maybe like an extra 5k ruble, uh, probably more like it probably comes out to about 60k on average, right? I'm doing some like really janky head math here about 60k to 55k, depending on prices, obviously. But it's pretty much the same price as the rat rig. And what do you get? Well, if you look at it um, comparatively, let's do this. Let's pull it up stats and then I should be able to, yeah. So this, they both cover uh, thorax and stomach, right? Armor class, uh, armor steel versus tit titan, titanium. I'm not really sure um, which one is better. I know armor steel repairs well, but breaks down fast. As far as it being durable. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure how that stacks up. But more importantly in my mind is the penalties are less, right? You get minus five on the uh, M1 tactical armor rig, the barter for the Aquamaris versus the rat rigs, uh, minus 15. And the big thing is you can carry more slots, right? Um, it has two, uh, two, two by twos, which you could put grizzlies in, drum mags, um, helmets, whatever. And it has a total of 20 slots versus the 12 of the rat rig. And like I said, it's like relatively, it's pretty, it's just a few extra rubles if you have the barter. Now, if you don't have the barter, mm, probably dodge this one. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's kind of expensive. Like you about double the price of the barter get off the flea however if you got this barter unlocked i found that it's it's kind of a weird thing because i've been doing insurance and yes this is a bigger rig right it takes up more space like if you die and someone goes to loot you and they see this rig here because the rig takes up in your in backpacks terms uh four by four cells right versus the rat rigs you know four by three they're probably not going to loot the rat rig, but because the M1, it, it can hold more slots, it's a little bit more appealing, but because it also takes up more space in the backpack, it's also a little less appealing. So it's kind of a weird thing, right, whether people want to loot or not. But the even more odder thing I found is that to insure it, right, so we go here, we click on insure, and there it goes, it loads. It's... 20k rubles to insure now just just for funsies i'm gonna buy a rat rig here and see how much it is to insure 
um it's 11k to ensure so that's actually pretty significant. So here's kind of like my thought process, right? I was insuring these M1 tactical rigs. I would die, right? I would get it back. Sometimes it would be completely zero, like zero out of 60. I go to repair it. It's like 30K to repair. So I'm thinking, okay, so I paid 20K to insure it. I paid 30K to repair it. So my total cost is 50K. I could have just bought a new one and get a brand new one because, I mean, sure, it repairs up to. 63.5 you know durability now that's like kind of what it what it sat at if i recall but it just kind of feels like ugh, is it even worth insuring i don't know i'm i'm still kind of torn because you could in theory kill someone drop your rig right and then pick, take their gear out and get your rig back through insurance it's a tough tough decision and i'm going on a little bit of tangent about insurance but I, i've been thinking about it more and more and I've been insuring only like helmets, armored, face mask. Um, sorry, not not armored. Uh, uh, helmets, uh, ear protect, ear like headsets. <laughs> words be hard. Uh, face mask, rigs, not the armored rigs, but just regular rigs. Um, like this alpha rig I got on right now, and um, occasionally backpacks if it's like a small, like a like a bird cut, and mags. Um, it, it's it's insurance is hard man it's really hard to decide if it's worth it or not because here's kind of like the weird weird thing on insurance like for example um this mp7 right here and uh, you know what let's do this so we can get the most accurate results so this mp7 right we're going to insure Took off the mods on it. And it's just a base MP7A1 black, you know, just the basic one. No mag, no mods, nothing. It's 12k to insure through Prapper. Now, if I go filter by item on the flea market, it's about 4k from the vendor. Or, or sorry, 4k off the flea market. 40k off the flea market. God, too many numbers. Now, the interesting part is if we go to filter by item, we go to traders. It's about $500 from Peacekeeper. And you say, well, what does that convert to rubles? Well, if we go to Peacekeeper level one, we type in 500. It's 63,500 rubles. So I'm assuming that insurance goes off the base price from the traders. So here's kind of the weird thing with ensuring budget gear is that if you're getting the budget gear for a low price from like, let's say the flea market, right? There's an abundance of MP9s, for example, or MP7s or, or whatever, you know, MDRs, right? There's just an abundance of them and they're going lower than what the traders sell on them for, right? And you go to insure them. It's like you're paying you're, it's almost not worth insuring the cheaper gear, the less expensive gear, because the less expensive gear insurance is being calculated off the trader that's sell that's quote unquote overselling it. You know what I mean? I'm, this is all unconfirmed, untested, you know, I, I can't speak on supreme authority here, but I believe this, there's something to this. and. I've been, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing because in my mind, insurance is in a weird spot because since it did get increased in its cost, let's say you just unlocked the flea market, okay? And let's say you found or you bought some really top tier stuff, but you paid an arm and a leg and a scav for it, like... You know, that that shift grip off the flea market, it was like, you know, half a million rubles or whatever. You go to insure that shift grip. It's it's going to be really cheap to insure, right? Because, I mean, shoot, for example, let's just let me just pull up. I, I know I got one in here somewhere and like, don't laugh at my stash. It's it's really pathetic. I'm a, I'm a filthy hoarder. All right. So here we go. Fil shift grip. We're going to filter by item. Um, this is like the the meta high ergonomics, decent recoil reduction uh, 
shift grip. It's currently going for 80k off the flea market. Now the trader is selling it for 155 dollars, which is about 20k. So what do we think the insurance is going to be? I'm going to say about 4k rubles to insure. There you go, 3,300 rubles. So it's it's interesting because going back to that scenario. If you, my light just cut off and that's going to bug me. If you buy the shift grip for 80k rubles, it makes sense to insure it because it's only going to cost you 3,000 rubles. But at the same time, because it is a meta grip, it is the most sought after item. If you die, people are going to want to loot it and take it. So there's this really weird imbalance in my mind with insurance now because it's like, well, if I get the item for really low cost comparatively to what the trader sells it for, then insurance is not really worth it. And if I get the really valuable item for a really high cost and insurance and, and, and insure it, yes, I'm not paying a lot for the insurance, but it's most likely going to get looted. So I've been thinking more and more about insurance, and I don't know what the right answer is to the equation. In my mind, I've just been doing the least sought after stuff and been getting some stuff back. But it's it's a hard thing. I, I really, I see a lot of people not insuring at all. And I think that might just be the easiest solution to it. I'm going to take a quick break, fix this light, and I'll be right. But we got the rigs covered, right? The armor. That's kind of my go-to kits. As far as backpack goes, sometimes I won't bring a backpack. It just kind of depends on the map. Especially like uh, interchange. I usually take hole in the wall, hole in the fence. Over by Ollie. Um, and just loot a few high value stuff and try to get out with that, what I can, but, um, other times I'll just bring like a tri-zip or a burk cut, whatever gets the job done. Nothing too crazy for these kits. So now that we got that out of the way, um, uh, let me show you some of the guns that I've been coming up. So like I said earlier, the call them budget may not be entirely accurate. But I'll call them mid maxer kits. So if you've sort of like reached the end of the wipe and you've gotten, you know, level 42, level 40, max, max weapon parts, traders like mechanic and, and whatnot, um, here's some interesting guns you could try and then see what you think. Most of these guns are within the price range of like 125,000 rubles to 150k. Thousand rubles um, with some variation on the low and high, and yeah, let's just get into the first one. So the first one I got here is the Sig MPX. Now a lot of people like the MP5 SD um, version, which I have a budget build here, and I was looking at it, and I and and to be fair, I used to run this a lot. I might have deleted it because I just decided the MP5 was better, but. Um, we can just build one up right here, right quick. So we slap this on, we replace the, well, we got to replace the, what's it called? Uh, we got the drum mag, I mean to say, how do we replace the, <laughs> I forget how do you change the, why is it not changing? Am I? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, I'm dumb. Okay, so we, we put the MP5 SD upper on. Duh. Okay, we put the stock back on. Whatever, the handguard, the suppressor. The mounts, we put the side on. Let's just do that for now. And then we can even put this on and slap on a little laser. And whatever. Okay, so we're good to go with that. So we do fine parts. Here's the interesting thing with the MP5s, if you will. You can buy the um, the base MP5 and then upgrade it to an MP5 SD. Alternatively, let me go and just save this as MP5 SD budget. 
you can go to Peacekeeper, who has, I think it's a barter. No, it's not a barter. It's a regular weapon. Uh, is it Peacekeeper 2? Yeah, Peacekeeper 2. There's an MP5 SD you can buy off him. Now, I believe this is locked behind one of his quests. I can't tell you which one off the top of my head. But this is an MP5 SD you can buy from him for 500 rubles, which is, I mean, it's the base MP5 SD, but 500 rubles, that is around, uh, is it like 40K? No, that can't be right. 60K, right? 63,500 rubles. And that comes with the most expensive, most important parts. So, like, if we go here, let me go back to the gun, his gun, right? Um, oops, not filter by item. Mess that up. Go to gun, edit preset. Right, we're just going to keep the stock on here, okay? Because uh, changing the stock, I mean, it, it, it's just whatever. It's not a big deal. It's just a few points. We're going to get the drum mag. We're going to get the uh, laser on there. And then we're going to get the sight. We're going to take off the iron sight on the back and we'll just slap on I can't remember which one's cheaper but we'll just go with this one it's fine and we'll go with the holo, uh, the EOTech the holotech that's kind of my go to so stats are pretty decent right we got a drum mag in there um, 64 ergo 33 vertical it's suppressed okay we're going to hit fine parts move trader so we don't need the cocking handle we don't need the upper receiver we don't need a handguard, we don't need the stock, we don't need a suppressor. We don't even need the gun, because we're getting all that from Peacekeeper for 65,000 rubles. Um, that sets us to around 74,000 um, rubles, 75,000 for all of our attachments, right? The, the site I chose, the laser, the mount for the laser, the mount for the site, drum mag. And this is off the flea market and from traders. But doing the math, um, we brought our costs around to like 135,000 rubles versus doing it the other method, which would be buying the base MP5 and upgrading it that way, which is more expensive by about 15,000 rubles, 20,000 rubles, right? So you save a little bit of money there. And it's a pretty good gun. Okay, I've run this before, but now that I got that out of the way, I want to talk to you about the MPX, something similar, right? So this is interesting to me because same sort of deal. I think it's Peacekeeper 3. He has an MPX silenced. Now, I don't... This also might be locked behind a quest. I'm not sure about that. I'm pretty sure the MP5 SD is, but the MPX suppressed, I'm not sure. So this is an integrated um, suppressor much like the MP5 SD, right? But already, just looking at the stats alone, 46 ergo, 32 recoil, um, also has an ex extra 50 rate of fire. It's already looking pretty good. And as you can see, it's uh, 507 uh, US dollars, which is basically the same price as the MP5 SD from him. So if we come over here, go to edit preset, this is my version that I came up with. So this is 65, or sorry, 56 ergo, 31 recoil, uh, vertical, uh, yada, yada, yada. It's got um, a grip, a laser, a sight, and it's got the 41 rounder mags in them. And what we're going to do is um, try to remember exactly. I need to check one thing real quick. Yes, so we do have to buy the pistol grip that I chose. Okay. Let's do this one more time. We're going to take off the upper receiver, the um, retractable stock, the... I think I did decide to upgrade the, the charging handle, so we will need to keep that. Take off the barrel. Uh, we do need this handguard, because this is a different handguard than the one that comes on it. 
uh, don't need a suppressor. We do need these rails. We don't need the stock and we don't need the gun. So again, we're about 65,000 um, rubles. And mind you, the gun costs about 65,000 rubles. So doing some quick janky head math here again. <laughs> um, it's about 130,000 rubles, 135, give or take. Um, it's basically very similar to the MP5 SD. And I like the 41 round magazines. You know, they don't have a huge ergo penalty. There's a cool little speed check modifier. You can like, um, I think this is the one where he gives you a pretty accurate count when you go to check it. I could be wrong about that. Um, but 41 rounds versus 50, like it's, it's close enough. You know, it gets the job done. Now, you can play around with the mods a bit more. Like, if you want, you could try putting on one of the other stocks, or maybe you want to go with a different um, handguard. The handguard I'm using, I should say, is the MP5, uh, or sorry, MPX Midwest Industries 6.6 .6 inch M lock handguard. Um, I think it comes with the, yeah, the, the Gen MPX Gen 1 is the default one. This one that I'm using, I think, has a little bit more ergo to it. So I just figured it, you know, we might as well do that. It's a nice little upgrade. You can keep it as the base um, gun. But this thing shoots pretty nice, in my opinion. Pretty good recoil. The ammo, however, that's the tricky part. So what I've been using is... You can use, what is it? Uh, PT, PTSGZH. This, I mean, it can only pin... Class two and below. It's it's not amazing, but if you if you're really good at aiming for the heads and they don't have like an Alton, you know, if they have a face shield, you're gonna have to hit them a, a couple of times, like five or six times to get through that. But it's not it's not terrible. Okay, it's 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 usable. Now you can go with like APC or, or sorry AP six point three, but I mean a hundred and fifty. Sorry, one hundred and five. 1,500 rubles. <laughs> I'll get the numbers right eventually. That's, that's just too expensive for me. For a budget gun, right? For a min-max gun. I just don't think you, you could just run an AK, a, a, you know, a naked AK with BP rounds that you get from Prapper for 900 rubles a round. I mean, it's just, and it's just way better in terms of the bullet performance. So what I've been running is Quake Maker. Now it's two bucks a round, which is about 200 and 220, 230 rubles a round. So, so fairly cheap, right? And this round is, yes, it's not as good pin as the PTGZH. I think Quake Maker can pin class one armor, but it has 85 damage. So if you shoot a scav in the thorax or someone with no armor, they'll die instantly, right? If you're looking to kill scavs, this is a great round. It's, again, 85 damage. That's not that far off from Rip's um, damage. I can't remember Rip's damage, but it's got some damage to it. I'll say that. So you can leg metal with this thing. I think it's fairly good. You can sort of have a balance between shooting them in the face and shooting them in the arms or legs. Um, but if they're wearing that juggernaut armor, I mean, you got, you got to go for that leg, you know, you just, you have to, but I think this is a fairly decent gun. Same thing with the MP9. This gun has insane fire rate. Now you have to make sure that you're finding the right MP9. So there's two different MP9s and this gun's dirt cheap. I mean, dirt cheap. So there's the MP9 that is has like a gold slash tan look to it this one you can do a little bit more on the modding side like you can do i think you can put like a grip on there um whereas the mp9n the black one the one that i'm recommending is is um has a fixed grip that you can't change but the big downside to it is that the mp9 the tan one has 900 rpm versus the mp9n's 11 100 rpm so you get way more rate of fire well i shouldn't say way more it's a pretty big jump and i think the stats are like very similar between the two just slightly different but not enough to be a huge difference right 
The big thing is this gun. I mean, look at it. It's it's going for 15,000 rubles on the flea market. That is so cheap. So let me just go to my build here. I'm going to go edit preset. So I got a... Uh, there, is, there is a caveat we should get into first. Um, so yes, the gun is cheap. But here's here's the caveat. The mags... Oh boy, the mags are really hard to get a hold of. So you do need to be, let's see, at Peacekeeper 2 is probably where it starts. Yeah, so <laughs> Peacekeeper 2, you can get 20 rounders and 25 rounders. No, sorry, you can get 15 and 20 rounders of the MP9. Okay, that's pretty small. Now, there is a barter for a gas analyzer, and you can do this three times, which... For 14, 15,000 rubles, I mean, right now it's going on the low end, 13,000 rubles for the gas analyzer. That's not that bad, actually. Um, that's pretty enticing. I, I'll have to, you know, next, when this wipe comes, I might be running the MP9 early wipe, checking out this barter, because that's actually pretty decent. But if you have Peacekeeper level 3, then you can get the 25 rounder and the 30 rounder mags. Ideally, you want the, the, the 30 rounder mags. Um, but it is kind of a grind to get there early wipe. However, again, this is sort of the min-maxer builds for myself. Since I did all the grind of unlocking all the traders, I'm going to get the most performance per ruble. So 40 bucks, uh, that comes out to about um, 5,000 rubles per round, uh, per mag. So there's a little bit of a caveat there, but very cheap, very cheap. So. Edit preset, again, I mean, the only thing I have on here that's anything to talk about is the suppressor. So we don't need, um, don't need that. We don't need that. Okay, so you do need to buy the adapter from Mechanic. Um, I'm not sure what level that is. And the suppressor is also from Mechanic, but I'm... Willing to bet the suppressors. Oh, there's those offers on it. Interesting. Wait, do we have, huh? Interesting. Um, let me just go back here and just get the final price and then we'll, we'll move on to the next point I want to make. So gun, um, basic Cobra sight, um, the nightshade, why not blue laser? Cause the, the sound suppressor adapter comes off a little rail that you can put a laser on. And the suppressor, I mean, the suppressor is worth more than, than the gun. <laughs> uh, the suppressor is 30k. All in all, looking about 75,000 rubles by my math and my traders. Really cheap gun, right? And again, I load Quake Maker in it, and we just go full at their legs, and, and they fall over. Now, it's not the most accurate thing in the world. I mean, we're looking at 7.15 MOA, um, even the MP. MPX has um, 6.25, which is a little bit better because for MOA or accuracy stat, the, the lower the number, the more accurate. Um, but, you know, it, and then it's got some kick to it. Don't get me wrong. These are all true things because it shoots fast and 49 vertical recoil. It's a little on the high side. However, if you play around this gun and its power that it can do to them legs and them toes, you can gobble them up and get that sweet, sweet, sweet PMC loot which, you know, I'm all about. So, yeah, let's take a look at Mechanic real quick. And I want to see what we got here for... Let's go to Functional Mods, I believe. And, ooh, it looks like we might be in the higher zone. Mechanic 3, so around level 30. That's when you can get the suppressor for the gun. That's tough. That is tough. Um, I'm guessing, yeah, as well, you get the, the mount or the suppressor, the adapter. Um, that is tough for early game, but nonetheless, I still think it's pretty cool to run where I'm at. So moving on, the most obvious one is the MP7, right? And you can see we got the themes going on of like some machine guns, but Man, this thing is really good. It's really, I've used it so much. About 40K for the gun, right? And this is the MP7A1, okay? 
I'm rocking 30 rounders. Now you do need to be mechanic level three, I believe, for the 30 rounders. And yep, that is definitely the case to get them for a reasonable price, right? I mean, this is, you know, 7,000 rubles for a 30 rounder. You, if you have mechanic four, there is the 40 rounders, but this is kind of a min-maxer gun. We're just going with like most performance per value. And you can see here, some of these listings on the flea market are like 35K, 40K for a 30 rounder. <sighs> yeah, it's like you got to have the, you got to have the mechanic unlocked to, do, to make this work. I wouldn't even, I think 20 rounders are kind of crazy. Now, ammo wise, again, APSX way too expensive, 2000 per round, pushing 3000 per round. We're just going to go with FMJSX, $3 per round. It's about, what, 350 rubles. This thing's got really good performance. I mean, it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's close to M855A1, I want to say. Don't quote me on that. But the performance is there. That, 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 that's as far as pin goes. Damage is probably a little bit weaker. But nonetheless, it's a really good round. It's a really good round. And 950 RPM, pretty fast. Pretty decent recoil. I mean, there's a lot here to like. So if we do the math here, we're going to go to Edit Preset, Find Parts, don't need that. And all in all, you're looking about 80K. Now, comparatively to the other ones I showed you, yeah, the MPX is more expensive, you know, and it's got less stats. It's probably, and it shoots worse ammo. Yeah, the MP9 is about the same, but it shoots worse ammo. There's options, though, for you to decide what you may prefer. I've been using all three. I like them equally. I mean, the downside, MP7 is not suppressed, but, you know, it's there's a trade-off you can suppress it if you want um i don't think it's worth i'd rather just go balls to the wall and make a meta mp7 meta using um loosely here but i think the suppressor is like 70k i mean that's as much as the gun with all the mods on it right okay 60k it and I think you need max mechanic. Like it, it's a tall, it's a tall ass to put a suppressor on the MP7 for that. Because at that point you're pushing pretty high. But you know, then again, it maybe it's worth it. It's up to you. There's a lot of things to to factor in. All right, so moving on to shotguns. I do, I did have another shotgun, but I mean, we'll just stick with old faithful here. The Taz shotgun, baby. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got a star round loaded in there. What? Yeah, trap. So if you don't know, this gun is absolutely insane. There's a barter for it on level two prepper. Um, and then you can buy it off level three prepper. Mm, regularly for 50, 50k rubles. You only get two, two per reset, so make sure you stock up. And they sell pretty high on the flea market, like pushing 100k, um, 80k, kind of in that range. I see them usually for 100k on the flea market. People find them in raid and then flip them on the flea market. But, I mean, this thing's just insane. You shoot them in the leg, five pellets. We talked about it a couple of episodes ago. Um, i trying to remember the name of the episode. I think it was related to armor hit zones. But, um, yeah, this thing's insane. I won't, I won't say that much more. Just make sure you are using the Shrap 20 rounds. Was it Shrap? Shrap Shrapnel 10. And this thing will do some damage for sure. I love taking this thing to the factory. Okay, this is my AK-74 budget. Now, 545 by 39 is kind of a rough round. I'm going to be honest. Not the biggest fan of it, but man, these parts are cheap. Okay, so let me just show you the stats right now. We got 49 ergonomics, 51, sorry, 54 recoil, 650 RPM, and... Yeah, pretty pretty standard stuff out the gate. Let's go to edit preset. Now this isn't the end version. This is the regular AK74, and I think from the trader, um, this is a scav one. So let's up the derp the condition minimum to ninety percent. So here we got a guy selling a flea market for about thirty k. That's pretty much what the trader sells it for, right? So you're looking about thirty k for just the base gun. Um, I kept the standard stock and slapped a rubber butt pad on. 
And we got the Scorpius Grip, which I believe Mechanic sells it. And this is not the best in slot. It's very similar stats to the RK3. In fact, it's the exact same, but it's cheaper than RK3 for the Pistol Grip. And yeah, I mean, it's really cheap. I think it's like 6,000 rubles. We get the 60 round drum mag, which there is the 45 that I personally am a fan of, but the 60s are just so cheap. I just don't even, I just bring a bunch. I keep a bunch, I keep like two in my container, you know, one in the gun, one in the rig. If I really think I need that much, right? I'll load it up for either BT or, you know, if I'm feeling spicy, maybe a little bit of a gonic. But I just don't bother packing these 60 round mags because they take forever, right? RK5 grip, this grip's insane. It's on like 90% of these budget builds, which I didn't mention earlier and I should have mentioned. Uh, we'll go over that here in a second. And then we got the meta um, muzzle brake on there because it's just so much bang for buck there. And for our rails, I'm using the X47. Where's it at? Where's it at? Uh, X47. AKA TDI X47 Tactical Handguard System. Now this one's pretty cool because it's a rail for the handguard, but also a rail for that overlaps the receiver and allows you to put a sight on it. And I'm a big fan of the EOTech. That's what I go with. And for my laser, I also go with the D-Ball because I can afford it. It's just what I prefer. So looking at the prices here, we don't need the tube, don't need that, don't need the stock. And we'll just say 90. Just forgot to do that. Okay, so I think that's everything. Um, we are looking around 144,000, we'll say 145,000 rubles for this gun. And its stats are very close to the meta builds okay very close you can get some better grips but this rk5 grip um skier sells it it is insanely valuable six thousand like seven thousand rubles for minus two ergo minus five or plus five ergonomics all right i said that backwards let me try that again minus two recoil plus five ergonomics this RK5, I don't know what they did to fudge the numbers, but for whatever reason, out of all of like the like like for uh let me see if I can find one. Do 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 so we'll go to functional mods. Okay, RK4 grip, right? Skier level two. You look at it, oh minus two recoil, oh plus four ergonomics. Like, wait a minute. The RK5 on skier level three is slightly cheaper and gives you an extra point of ergo so it's and and this is kind of the weird thing of a lot of these like here's an, an a, a duplicate basically the the vtac uvg tactical grip the one that's got like all the the holes cut out in the grip if you will um kind of like a hex looking cut um same stats but the rk5 is just cheaper so yeah it's RK5, in my mind, one of the best budget grips you can get. I would stick with that for all of my budget builds slash min-maxer builds. And yeah, I mean, the J-Mac, you do need max mechanic, but like, like I've said multiple times, this is sort of my min-maxer slash budget builds. Because um, for me, this is quote-unquote budget. So that's the AK. I typically go with BT, and we just try to headshot people. BT is red, like it, you can get it for some reasonable price. There is some barters. Um, sometimes it drops below the trader price. Like right now, it's actually going above the trader price, interestingly enough. Sometimes I've seen it for like 500 rubles, which is a pretty nice snag. Yeah, it's not consistent versus class four. Yeah, it's a trace around. Um, but it can get the job done. I usually don't bother with BS. I just skip straight to Golnik. I just feel like they're too similar. Sometimes I'll do whatever's cheaper, but if I ever run into a Giga Chat of Class 6 armor, I want a Golnik. You know, I want to be able to shoot him three times in the chest and he follows over dead. A Golnik, a thousand rubles per round. Um, sometimes a little bit more, like a thousand three hundred. But it kind of depends on what you want to do here. Now, you could go with an AK. Um, 
762 build that's very similar to this, but it's going to have a little bit more recoil. And, you know, you're not going to have the 60 rounder in it. it it's a bit of a trade off. Um, so you have to kind of pick your poison there. Um, matter of fact, we could just do a AKM build real quick. Um, I think an AKM should be cheaper than a AK-103. Might have to look into this. Someone might actually know which one's more cost-effective. AKM versus AK-103. I'm not too sure what would be... Oh, well, AKMS might be interesting, but... Um, there we go. Okay. And there could even be a barter, so we'll slap the rubber butt pad. We'll slap that on. Um, the, the, the 50 rounders are going to be way more expensive, so we're going to stick with the 30. Um, but for the 30s, we'll go with the 103 mags. And we'll slap on that same X47. We'll take off the iron sights. We'll put on the EOTech. Uh, we'll put on the JMAC. And this JMAC muzzle brake might be more expensive. And then we'll put the RK5 on. I think that's it. So we're going to do fine parts. We're going to sort by 90%. So the AK is a little bit more expensive, but looking at these parts, um, looks to be a little bit cheaper. Interesting. Uh, overall, it's at um, 135,000 rubles. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Um, might be something to look into. Like, let's just take a look at the stats here and see what we got. I mean, sure, we don't... Oof, yeah, 72 recoil. That's kind of on the high side. Um, you could definitely make this work. I mean, 55 ergonomics, that's pretty decent. Um, you could definitely make this work. Might have to give this a go and see how it feels because um, that 762 BP for 900... Rubles around uh, from Prapper is really valuable. Really, really good buy there. So there's an option for you. So I'm, I'm going to kind of speed it up a bit here because I want to wrap this up sooner than later. I've been trying the MDR. I haven't used this gun in forever. The um, the 556 by 45 uh, MDR, that is. I was running a suppressor on it, but... You just don't get here. I'll I'll show you right now. Um, it's it, it, this is literally the build. It's an MDR, right, with a Magpul M Lock AFG tactical grip. The one that doesn't require a a rail. It just locks into the handguard. That's default on a lot of guns. Um, it's like plus two recoil. Uh, let's just see here because I think it's plus two plus nine. Sorry, plus. Plus two recoil, minus seven ergo. And it's it's a little bit more pricey, but I mostly did it for aesthetics because we got to get the, the tan on tan. Um, we get a Troy mag from Mechanic, right? It's You could, even the Sting mag is just fine. You know, I don't go crazy with 30 rounders or 60 rounders. You can, of course, if you want, but those are really expensive. And I put on the AR-15 Bullet Tech ST6015 muzzle brake. Um, I don't like, I tried some of the other options, like there's the one that has the muzzle, has like the compensator on top of it. I, I wasn't a fan of the extra muzzle flash, but let me just show you real quick. So the stats right now are 81 ergo, like that's insanely high. 64 recoil, not amazing, okay, not amazing. And the fire rate is a little bit on the low side, 650 RPM, but... The ammo is so cheap from Skier. I think it's. I think you need Skier level four, M855A1. Five, five, it's a. It's a slightly better than BT. Okay. It's not the best. Okay. It ain't no seven six two by thirty nine BP, but you can get ninety rounds per reset for like four hundred rubles a round. It's so cheap. You just if you have the time to stock up on it. Always, always, always stock up on M855A1 from Skier. It's insane. And we load that into the gun, and we try to kill juicers. Now, 
<laughs> let me show you what I was doing before. So before I was running, I think it was this AR-15 Surefire Muzzle Flash, and then this Surefire SOCOM Suppressor, right? The tanned one. Okay. Now, you know, we did it for the memes, for the aesthetics, you know, we gotta, we gotta keep it matching tan on tan, but you know, it is a, it is a fairly cheap suppressor. Like, as a matter of fact, let's just look. The suppressor is, okay, it's a little high today, <laughs> but 30K, I mean, that's not too bad, right? Not too bad. And it's got some pretty good stats, okay? However, if I hover over the, 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 the bullet tech, right? So with the suppressor on, the ergo goes from like what is it 80 87 or whatever i said like to 64 ergonomics okay the recoil goes from 64 to 61 vertical so you see how you're hardly getting any reduction in recoil i'm only lo i'm only losing or gaining three points in recoil reduction and Giga Beef talks about this all the time, and that's because of how the MDR works in that its base stats are really low compared to like the base stats of an AK. Because an AK, when all of its parts are stripped apart, it's just the receiver, the barrel, and that's the gun, right? Whereas the MDR, when all of its parts are stripped apart, it's the receiver the stock that's built into the gun and yeah it's it's it's, it's different so the stock is already pre-calculated into the stripped down portion of the gun and the stocks have such a huge huge impact on the recoil reduction of the guns and so sort of how the math works is since it's doing the the suppressor is calculating the recoil off what it's at currently, or I think it's the base stats, it's not getting that much reduction, even though the suppressor was like, oh god, um, find my parts. Even though this suppressor has a minus 10% recoil, it's the way it calculates, it only gives me three points of recoil reduction. Whereas if I put this on M4, I'm gonna see a lot more points reduced. So I've made the switch. I say all that to say I made the switch to this um, AR-15 bullet tech muzzle brake because I figured, you know what? I'll just take advantage of the higher ergo that this gun has. It means I can hold angles longer. I can ADS faster and whatnot. And sure, I'm unsuppressed, but it gets the jobs done. I mean, I was using a blue laser. I switched to a D-ball. Let's look at the total cost here. So we don't need that. We don't need... Oh, we do need that. We don't need the barrel. We everything else we need. Um, one hundred and twenty-two thousand rubles. Pretty decent for an AR uh build, and it gets the job done. You know. So the next one I want to go over is my M14 build. Now, is it looks kind of fancy, but it's really not. I promise you, the parts are cheap. So we'll go over to stats quickly. Um, forty-seven ergo. 115 vertical recoil and 700 rpm so you do need some relatively higher level traders but looking at the cost it is about 147,000 rubles now you can swap out sometimes this archangel um pro mag stock is cheaper than this m14 sage international one that i'm using it's the one from mechanic where it's like you gotta buy the the stock then you gotta buy the pistol grip and then you gotta buy the the stock as well i i guess it technically okay sorry you buy the handguard the pistol grip and then the stock it kind of like pieces together it, it looks like a an m14 ebr from like a call of duty series right but the archangel one it has less ergo, it has a little bit more recoil, but I was using this, and it's a little bit cheaper. Total costs around 100 and 
32,000 rubles. I kind of made the decision because sometimes, like, here, and if we go find my parts, remove traders. Yeah, sometimes you can get the Pro Mag Archangel stock for a little bit cheaper than Trader. I think when I was doing the build, it was cheaper, but I started seeing less and less people offer up this stock or lower than a trader price. So I figured I might as well just go ahead and upgrade to the M14 um, Sage EBR stock and pistol grip combo. Now I'm using 30 rounders. They are a little bit more expensive. You do need a higher trade level. The most important part on this gun is the sight or the mount for the sight. It's the M14 A dot M14 arms. Um, Hashtag 18 scope mount. There's one that is required for a mechanic gunsmith quest that is way expensive. Do not get that one. Make sure you get this one. There are some barters for these different um, mounts, I believe. But just keep an eye for that. Make sure you get this one. Make sure you can get it from the trader or from a reasonable price off the flea market because you do not want to overpay for this. I'm also using the the 16 inch barrel and actually we don't need that so that kind of brings down the price a little bit as well. Um actually helps out a lot. Like right now there's listings for these um M14 uh EBR parts, the stock and the handguard which helps bring down the cost significantly. Like now we're looking at 120,000 rubles, but it's a great gun. The the AR-10 Odin Works Atlas uh, muzzle brake is really good. It's almost as good as the Best in Slot muzzle brake. Um, that's yeah, the Best in Slot one gives you an extra three percent off on your vertical recoil. I shouldn't say three percent, but three points in this current build. However, it's way more expensive like let's look here um uh, from the dealer it's 160 dollars us oh god that's like 16 uh we'll i want to say that's sixteen thousand. let me just do some quick calculator i think dollars are like 127 times 160 okay 20k rubles um give or take whereas this one it's a little bit cheaper right 15k sometimes again you can find this cheaper off players are selling it so i go with the odin muzzle break and for my ammo i like m80 but m80 is kind of not that great like actually i think even m8551 has more pin than m80 if i'm not mistaken so it's this one's a tough one for me because yeah, M80 is only three bucks around, right? And it's got high damage, but they may feel a little bit tanky when you're shooting them, I notice. M62 is $8 around, and at that point, it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, it has a little bit more pen. Apparently, it has a recoil reduction on the stats as well, the bullet. I'm not too convinced on M62. It, it's... Just kind of feels like a slightly better M80 for, you know, double the cost. M80 is three bucks around. That's really cheap. I mean, 400 rubles a pop. It's it's a tough one for sure, but I wouldn't recommend M61. Just way too expensive. If you want to top load like one or two bullets in, that's up to you. Uh, but there's some options for you there. So I, I'm a big fan of the M1A. It feels nice. You can rock a blue laser. Of course, I rock the D-ball. I've just decided to make the switch. It's worth the extra rubles to have the laser slash flashlight combo slash infrared combo and whatnot so the last one i have here is the svd so this thing oh man it, it hurts it hurts okay the the rough part is it is a pretty expensive build relatively speaking so like yeah there's some parts we don't need here in this list but for 154,000 rubles that's the cost of this build. So part-wise, I'm rocking, you know, no suppressor. We just keep the standard uh, muzzle brake on there. I got a, a laser and a, and a mount for it. 
I put the laser on the SVD CAAR or CAA DRG L1 uh, mount rail. I got a blue laser on that to do some nice hip firing action. I got the Magpul M lock AFG grip onto the handguard, which is the SVD modern handguard. And I think you need a relatively high trader level for that. I want to say prepper for, but I'm not too sure. 20 rounder SVD mags, the Scorpius um, hand grip. And I just slapped on the Axon Cobra uh, EKP reflex sight that goes onto the dovetail. And that's pretty much it. It's very simple mods. Okay. The ergonomics is 41. The recoil is 160. That's pretty high. And again, 700 RPM. However, the ammo, we can get a little bit better of ammo. So the, the ammo, I am usually go with PS, 762 by 54 RPS. And it's about 800 rubles per round. And again, I mean, you know, when we compare it to BT or, or, or sorry, sorry, not BT, but 762 by 39 BP for 900 rubles per round, give or take. It's like, oh man, you know, it's kind of hard, but this thing can one tap players in the thorax. If they're wearing class four and you hit them, they, if the map checks out, they should be dead in a single shot. So you can really catch some people off guard with this thing. Yeah, if you want, you could put a, an optic on there. Um, you could swap around some of the rails to get some more preferable optics. But I kind of treat it as like a giant hand, can hand cannon. You know, if they're up close, we just come the laser and blah, 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 blah. If they're at like a medium distance, try to line up a shot with the sight and take them out. But I mean, this thing hurts. Like you do not want to catch five rounds into your stomach in this thing because it will absolutely kill you. So that's kind of been my segment for budget guns slash mid max guns i've been doing a lot of them as of recently i've kind of come up with some interesting builds and some interesting thoughts and conclusions like after talking with everyone here about all these different options i'm kind of want to just say you know what let's just go to prepper let's go to level four prepper no level three prepper let's click on 762 by 39 bp Let's go ahead and buy it all and then do a link search and just find a gun that accepts it like SKS, a VPO, you know, an AKM, an AKMS and just slap that in there and just go to town with it because I just feel like that round is just so good. Like the price to performance is insane. And I, I kind of think that they might remove it from the trader. Um, like since they've changed this around a bit, it used to be that this round's crafting cost was oh god was it one green gunpowder and two blue gunpowders or was it one green powder and one blue gunpowder i can't remember but they nerf the craft in the hideout and we'll go ahead and just pop in the hideout real quick for the uh video watchers on youtubes but i i just really think this round is just so, I mean, I have, I have so much 762 by 39 BP from buying it, from crafting it, from taking it off players, from finding it. It's, it's insane. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. So let me claim my craft here. So let's see, where's that craft at? Just have to keep scrolling till I find it. Oh, the joys of combating bots. Okay, uh, here it is. So I want to say they upped the craft time and they upped the inputs. Like, I think it's an extra green gum powder. And then they also lowered the output. Like, it used to give 250 or something, and now it gives 180. So... I say that to say that prices, if you don't have trader unlocked for um, BP rounds, it's pretty expensive. That used to not be the case. It used to be you would see them at like sitting around 800. Like as a matter of fact, um, we can go to, I can switch gears. I'll pull up Tarkov Market. 
which for those of you who don't know, Tarkov Market is a third-party site that um, essentially tracks pricing off the flea market using some pretty cool screenshot technology with some bots. And let's see if this works. We'll go here. We'll switch this to... Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. There it is. Um, I might have to play with it a bit to get it looking nice. But as you can see, if we go to the six month price chart, I mean, look at this. Let me zoom it up a bit so you can really see what's going on here. Look at the insane. Okay, so six months, right? June 2021. Um, 21st of June 21, people, the white pits, people are selling stuff flea market. It's going for about 1,400 rounds. There's this insane spike in uh, the 27th of June, going for about 2,500 rounds. And then there's a dip back down to 1,500. And it's slowly, as more and more people get in, in in the following months into the flea market, July, August, there's more and more crafters. There's more and more sellers, right? So the price starts falling. And you can see here it's at 900 here in August 5th. August 14th, it's at 943. That's like right at the trader price. Even here down in September, it's at 800, uh, 890. That's lower than the trader price. And then they did this change coming up here. And I want to say October, sometime in October, that knocked it back up because they nerfed the craft. But it was insane. You could just buy. You didn't even need the trader unlock. You could just buy BP from the from the flea market. Other people selling it, and boom, you got one of the one of the best ammo's in the game. It feels like. So I say all that to say. I kind of hope that what they do is they remove it from the trader and just make it fine and rate only, and you can still craft it. I think that that helps a bit, because um, now it now it's currently a very heavy heavy trader. Um, advantage. I mean, j uh, like we can just look here. Um, actually, let's just go back to Tarkov Market. That makes the most sense to me. So here you can see there's the craft, and we'll go to the crafting table, hideout calculator. And I'll bring this down in frame so you can see here. Gunpowder currently is running about 50k, and blue 14k, and yeah, the the craft is profit. Like your your total profit is about a, a hundred thousand rubles, and per hour your profit per hour is about nine thousand uh, rubles per hour. It's a pretty it's a pretty good craft. I mean, it, in fact, it might even be currently um, the most profitable craft per hour, which it is. And the whole actually no, that's not right. That's not right. Yeah, there's no way that's right. Yeah, that's not right. Scratch that. I had it set to only show BP um, filter by the letters BP. But anyways, it's it's a decent craft, okay? It, you can still make money off the craft. But there's still utility in the craft as well. And the interesting part is, if green gunpowder gets really expensive, like, God, back in June 21st, it was, like, super cheap. Holy heck, 16,000 rubles. Per green gum powder, it's insane. Um, wow, that's insane. But it's been pretty steady around fifty k. That hasn't changed much. So I, I, I think that might be a decent compromise because you know, buying. Yeah, you know, it's either yeah. If that would probably raise the price of green gum powder, it not being available. The fact that you couldn't buy BP from Prapper anymore. Uh, that would make green gunpowder insanely more valuable. Let's see if we can filter by green. Uh, gunpowder. Which would make SP6, uh, M995. I mean, it's actually insane. All of these crafts are, are profitable. Um, even... Uh, <laughs> Even PBM for nine mil, the the seven and thirty one is is um 
profitable to craft. But all of those would get re um a cost more to craft essentially. Like making red gunpowder would cost more, a golnik would cost more. Um so I don't know. That might that yeah, they might have to play around. Something to think about. Um going in the next swipe. I mean next swipe if all things are equal, everything's the same. I think we'll just see another BP meta, mutant meta. We'll see with the scar coming in how that's gonna shape things up. I don't know. I've thought about it and I'm I'm thinking to myself, you know, unless the recoil is really low, like I'm talking like 60, right? And I'm assuming it's a it's a 762 um by 762 by 51, the 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 NATO, the NATO round, like M80, M61. If it's a scar that accepts those types of calibers, right? Yeah, it's automatic. Maybe if the recoil is like in the 60s, maybe if the rate of fire is like 700, um, 750. It it could be these. I mean, ah, let's let's just for fun, for fun, real quick. Uh, we'll go to Wikipedia. We'll look at the scar, not Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> FN scar. So rate of fire is do 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 do. I mean, there's a it's thing. This thing's heavily modifiable, from what I understand. Ooh, rate of fire is around five fifty to six fifty. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, guys. The recoil, because I'm pretty sure it's twenty round mags. They might. It might be able to accept. 25 rounders um p mags because i know those exist but the recoil's got to be very low guys for it for i think it to be you know meta in my mind um like i'm talking 60 i think i keep saying that number but i just if it's if it's like 70 like eh, maybe but what are you gonna shoot m80 um it's not as good as bp are you M62? That's not as good as BP. I mean, M I think, yeah, M62's got more damage, but BP's got more penetration. Like, you know, I just... And then M61 is, like, super expensive, like 3,000 rubles per round. Um, Sure, it's, you know, can pen anything and has high damage also, but I don't know. It's It's a tough one. It's a tough one. So we'll see about that. I just, I still think uh, BP is going to be king unless they change it. Next swipe. But we shall see. I'm excited for the stuff coming up. And look forward to playing Lighthouse and checking out all the new fun content. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode was a little bit different. Um, I hope it was enjoyable for you guys and I hope you got some value out of it. And hopefully, um, you know, we wish Giga Beef speedy recovery and positive vibes, <laughs> as they do say. But with that, guys, we'll wrap it up and we'll see you next week. Take care.